Hey, this is Jason with 4W Knives. Got a little project coming your way. I've got a whole bunch of these tiny fish hooks that I'm going to make some fish hook Damascus out of. Uh, I've already done some prep work. I've got I soaked these in acetone overnight because I don't know what's on them. Heck, I don't even know if this is going to work. I'm just going to give it a shot. I've seen some other videos uh, where they did it and thought it would look cool and wanted to try it since I started this uh, little adventure into bladesmithing. I've done some prep work in addition to that. I've got this square tubing. I couldn't find white out uh, in any of the stores locally, so I bought some white spray paint and understand that's supposed to work. Powder still that I'm gonna use, I've got a little bit of 1095 that I'm gonna put in to begin with and then topping it all off. I've got some 1080 with 2% nickel, but we use up my 1095 and then uh, add that in there. Don't know how it'll work, but I'm excited. So I uh, hope you enjoy the video. All right, as you can see, I've got the handle uh, welded to it and the caps on. I did drill a little pinhole to make sure any of the gases escaped. Um, once I get it up to forge welding temperatures, I'll take it over to my air over hydraulic press that I've got some dies that I made on it. Uh, once I get the initial squeeze, I'll take it to the uh, bog splitter press and uh, do the final squeezing on it. Well, the white paint worked. Got it uh, out of the can and it came out pretty easily. I got a little too aggressive with my uh, uh, cutoff wheel and, and scored the uh, top of the bill a little bit. But uh, So now I'm just going to heat it up really good and go ahead and uh, forge it down to billet size. So um, I'll use my log splitter press and uh, smooth it out with the uh, roller mill as long as everything's looking good that is okay I'll keep it at or near welding temperatures the whole time that I stretch this out uh, log splitter press does a good job of uh, getting a small and then the roller mill make quick work of it uh, I already had it pretty much to the width that I wanted uh, out of the canister so once I get it pressed down, I'll just take it to the roller mill, which stretches it without widening it, which is always handy. All right, once I get it through uh, on the roller mill, I've got it down to just less than a quarter inch thickness. Uh, I start working in the tip. Um, this way I prefer to do it. Start at the tip and work my way down. Um, after I get the tip formed in the belly of the knife where I like it, I'll uh, use the edge of the anvil to start where the finger swell is or the back of the blade and the handle begins. Um, I try a couple of different techniques on this just to, to improve my hammer work because as you know I'm not textbook by any mean uh, self-taught still learning and uh, videos have helped but uh, I'm still a long ways from being being good with a hammer
At this point, I've got the handle uh, starting to form the way I want it. I used my uh, cross peen hammer quite a bit, and then this just little ball peen hammer. A uh, little smaller surface area, I'm able to control it a little bit better. Once I get it, I'm able to take it to the grinder to do the final shaping. Once I get it to shape, I'll use a flat platen and do a surface grind on it just to make sure it's flat and even and to get rid of any of the uh, all hammer marks and, and forging marks on it. Um, I did not forge my bevels because I chose to do the 10 inch wheel and put a hollow grind on it. I uh, just thought it would fit this knife a little bit better. So uh, my process is pretty much the same as it is using a flat platen though I start off by marking my center edge and grinding down to an approximate 45 degree angle and then work my way up to the spine of the knife or to what was high up on the spine as I want it. Okay the clip after this one is post heat treat um, because I am the world's worst at remembering to turn the camera on for the heat treating part. Uh, just uh, watching the colors, making sure I don't overheat the blade, uh, but making sure I get it hot enough and it slips my mind. It seems like it does it every video. Uh, but I did quench it uh, after normalizing and then I tempered it uh, in the toaster oven at uh, 400 degrees for two hours. All right, I tried to get the edge geometry down as thin as possible on this, and I go through the same progression of belts I would normally do. Uh, start with an 80 post heat treat, go to 120, a 220 trizac, 400 trizac, and then I'll do a conditioning belt, and sometimes I will do an 800 trizac. All right, since I left out the heat treating, I thought I would go ahead and give you guys a uh, sneak peek at that pattern. <laughs> Check that out. Uh, I am gonna do a coffee etch and you will need to wait to uh, see it. But uh, the lighting's not great in here, but I wanted to give you something. So uh, there you go. I'm gonna get the handles picked out. Soak this sucker in some coffee for a while and uh, this is pretty close to being done. All right, it's been about uh, three weeks since I filmed the uh, etch, uh, but I had somebody reach out to me and was interested in the knife. So I had to wait and get a couple of things to uh, make it to where uh, it was custom for what they were wanting. Uh, they wanted to go uh, elk antler. So I've got some sheds that uh, I'm gonna be putting on there. So it's gonna look all right. Uh, still going to do the coffee etch, but uh, <clears throat> for right now, I think it's looking pretty sharp. So here I'm just drilling the holes for the handle through the antler. Uh, this one side of it, I'll, I did the other one off camera. Once I get that up, I'll do my rough grind. Uh, I always like to start with the fingers uh, down at the belly of the knife and using my small wheel attachment. This is a rough grind. I'll get it close uh, prior to glue up, but it's not my final product. Um, after I get the end of the uh, handle ground down, I'll take the scales off and I'll do the fit up uh, near where the blade, or I guess it'd be the ricasso area. Uh, it's pretty critical to do it this way. If you wait until after you glue up, it's really hard to get it in there and get it sanded. Uh, so I do all my shaping, uh, my hand sanding, my uh, buffing everything uh, at this point prior to glue up. Usually have a little bit of touch up uh, after glue up, but it, it's not bad. If you wait, man, it's a disaster. Thank you. 
All right, now it's time for the finish grinding. Uh, I've already cut off the pins and now I'll do the uh, finish grinding on the handle. I like to use the 10 inch wheel to do the spine of the knife, just leaves a good finish to it. And I'll also use it to grind the pins flush with the antler. Um, antler's a little more challenging because it's not exactly square and uh, it's a little harder to get into. And you, I don't want to remove too much of the natural finish. Um, I'll make it to where it doesn't have any sharp edges and then I'll go to the uh, small wheel to get the final, uh, final good feeling uh, handle off of it. Alright, I got this little dude all finished up. Uh, extremely happy with the way it turned out. The pattern is awesome. The best part is I still have enough of the uh, billet left that I can make another a knife of similar size. So I'm excited to do that later on now that I kind of know what it's going to look like. Uh, Coffee Etch really brought out the contrast in the, I'm guessing it's the hooks and the powder steel. Uh, did my own sheath work, usually use my daughter, but she's down with the knee surgery right now. So uh, sheath isn't perfect, but it's, it's not too bad. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching and uh, look forward ahead. I've got an EDC video coming up and I will also be starting my uh, little steel ball uh, canister Damascus here pretty soon. And don't forget to like and subscribe and you can always check me out at uh, 4W Knives on Facebook. Thanks again.